வணக்கம் children can develop post burn contractures very easily either because of no treatment or sometimes inadequate treatment and when these contractures do develop in children they are not as easy to treat as in adults and that is because of so many reasons in this video we shall see the specific problems that occur in children who develop post burn contractures and how to manage them when there is a post burn contracture in an adult there is absolutely no problem you can put in a skin graft and get a very good result after releasing the contracture but when it comes to children it is going to be slightly different and how are they different it is there are two problem there are many differences between contractures in children and contractures in adults there are two main differences that i can think of one is it is difficult to get compliance for splints and therapy in children and there is also going to be a growth of the hand and bones in children so what is the solution and how do we treat post burn contractures in children because we have to resurface them with good skin cover we must remember that when treating children we need to give a skin cover that will not require much splinting obviously because the children may not be dependable to wear splints the second thing is we need to provide a skin cover that can grow with the patient and we have got two options full thickness skin grafts or flap cover we can apply a full thickness skin graft or integrated dermal regeneration template such as integra or a flap cover now let us consider these three options the advantages of the full thickness skin graft we all know they, there is less contraction on healing better aesthetic result and thicker skin which is more resistant to trauma and the disadvantages are it is possible that there may be a little bit of failure of the graft and a limitation in the size of the graft and is there a growth potential now look at this patient who has had a full thickness grafting done in early childhood now he is in late 20s he has presented with this problem so obviously the growth potential differs now coming to skin flap cover now the advantages are durable skin cover as you can see in this example the next is requirement of splints and therapy is not prolonged i am not saying that after flaps you do not require splints or therapy you do require splints or therapy but it is not prolonged and it grows with the patient and disadvantages of course donor site morbidity cosmesis is questionable now look at this example again this was a full thickness graft done 3 years earlier this child is around 11 years old now and she has got a good functioning uh, uh, hand but the cosmesis is not is not very adequate and definitely a longer procedure in hospitalization the flap the division and then the stages of syndactyly release if it is going to be for the fingers so post burn contracture release and flap cover it consists of the following steps release of the skin contracture which can be either incision or excisional release in the in the case of children with involvement of the fingers palm it is not a large raw area so you have to do an excisional cover so that the flap gets inset into good skin release of the retinacular contracture bands now what you see under the skin in a burn contracture normally under the skin we have retinacular system this system we do not consider much when we talk about contracture release this must also be released only when this is released you will not get a relapse of the contracture the third is the release of the joint contracture a long standing contracture of the skin may result in the long standing contracture of the joint and the ligaments and the volar plate if it is going to involve the proximal interphalangeal joint now more important than this sometimes long standing contractures can also stunt the development of the growing bone in children now this is also very important this is important because it helps in the prognosis you are going to tell the patients attenders that you may not get the complete length of the finger 
because there is al already a stunting of the growth of the bones. So this is another important difference between children's contractures and adult contractures. Then after releasing the contractures on the hand, anywhere on the hand, we need to confirm the viability of the tip of the fingers. K-wire fixation. Now a lot of people do K-wire fixation and uh, advise it as a protocol. As a matter of fact, there was a paper by Dr. N. C. Hariharan and Dr. R. Sridhar who advocated K-wire fixation after release of the contracture. Yes, I do agree it is important for the positioning of the flap. But we need to remember that the contractures begin after 3 weeks. And that is the time you are going to remove your K-wires. So I feel that it is not going to help much. For instance, look at in this case that I did. You can see the K-wires have been applied. But after 3 weeks, after removing the K-wires, again it goes in for flexion. So it is a therapy afterwards, that short term therapy that is required during that period to keep the joints soft and supple. Surgical syntactyl need, needs to be done and then adequate flap cover. Please note the words adequate flap cover. It should not be too tight. It should be comfortable so that to allow for further procedures that need to be done or further growth of the fingers or hand. Now we shall see two illustrative examples and see what lessons we can learn from them. In this stage the contracture of the fingers of the left hand have been released and both the metacarpophalangeal joints and the proximal interphalangeal joint contractures have been released. A surgical syntactyly was done and resurfacing was done with an ipsilateral paraumbilical flap. And this is the result after the flap division. You can make out a bulky flap and you can also make out there is a residual contracture in the proximal interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joint of the little finger. In the next stage, after 6 months, the release of the syntactyly between the index and middle fingers was done. So in the next procedure we realized that we cannot go further, further without releasing that contracture of the ring and little fingers which has been done and we have also released the middle and ring finger syntactyly and resurfaced the raw area again with the groin flap. The result at the end of one year shows a good contracture release that are sustained on the left hand index and middle fingers with good movements seen in both fingers. But on the ring finger there appears to be proximal interphalangeal joint contracture that is persistent and the little finger is very much shortened due to the growth deficit in the contracted state. The case number two that we are going to discuss today. You can see this is a typical child has put uh, her hand, uh, her left hand in a hot uh, sambar. And this is how the child presented. The scar was immature. So we planned for uh, therapy and uh, mobilization. But this was how, what it was at the end of 6 months. So then we took it up first. We released the dorsal contracture and gave an inferiorly based abdominal flap. The flap settled well. In the second stage, we have still not released the syntactly. In the second stage, we did a volar contracture release and an, uh, a groin flap has been done. And here we started releasing the syndactyly. The syndactyly between the index and mid fingers was done. Then the syndactyly between the ring and little fingers. I did each syndactyly as a separate stage. And finally, a syndactyly release between the mid and ring fingers. And at the end, the result at 6 months, this was what we achieved. The function of the hand, what was like the, uh, what you see on the left. And this is the result postoperatively. Cosmetically, not very acceptable, but function wise, the child is able to do all the work required. So, when dealing with the management of post burn contractures in children, it is important to note that not only complete release of the skin contracture needs to be done, but we also need to release the scar tissue and also release the joint capsule if necessary so that complete release can be obtained. The second is resurfacing with a full thickness skin graft or a flap cover. The flap cover being the slightly better option because in children two factors are against the reconstructive surgeon. The children are going to grow and the children are not going to wear the splint. Reconstruction that can counter the above problems would be the best. 
I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about post burn problems. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning, hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics.